All right, big daddies, from yesterday, December 2023, we have a Bitcoin market update. This is from Coindesk. We got Bitcoin could reach 160K in 2024 on the back of the Bitcoin halving, the spot ETF hype. Uh, yeah, that's all coming down the old pike or pipe or what is the same? It's coming. I think the ETF, uh, Bitcoin ETF approval for BlackRock, I think Vanguard may have one. I'm not sure if Fidelity has one. Uh, could be the first quarter of 2024. That could be huge for Bitcoin for many reasons, just basically making it a conventional investment tool for people that don't want to buy Bitcoin or mine Bitcoin or hold Bitcoin in their wallets where you could be scammed. As I posted in earlier videos, you got to be careful with your hardware wallets and uh, all wallets with man in the middle attacks and address spoofing. Look those up. Be careful. All right, let's get into it. Bitcoin has historically rallied after its having event which automatically decreases the supply of new coins in the open market. Uh, traders are likely pricing in the event that's uh, scheduled for April 2024. Okay, put that on your calendar. The halving is scheduled for April 2024. So just watch the pricing. Maybe the pricing has gone up to 44000 If you look over here, we're at 43.9. This is uh, Coinbase Pro, which they say is deprecated or, or defunct, but it still works. I don't know if they let you trade on it or not. It used to be GDAX, G-D-A-X. But yeah, I don't know what what use it is with Coinbase now, but it still works. It's out there. It's a great little tool. You see the buy orders and everything. All right, enough about that. Let's go on. Look, there's some cows. All right. A slurry of catalysts and historical behavior could catapult Bitcoin to as high as 160,000. Let's repeat that sentence. A slurry... I guess that means a mix, a bunch, I don't know, a mix. Like you go Dairy Queen, you get a slurpy slurry, I don't know. A slurry of catalyst and historical behavior could catapult Bitcoin to as high as 160000 in a widely expected bull market that analysts say could be underway in 2024. Well, correct me if I'm wrong. Bitcoin was at 26000 in October. Now we're at almost... 44,000. I think we've had a bull market. I think it's done quite well. All right. Expected demand. Expected demand for Bitcoin from several spot exchange traded funds, ETFs, exchange traded funds uh, in the U.S. The upcoming, what is it? That doesn't make sense. I'm trying to read, I'm trying to understand the sentence. There's an expected demand for Bitcoin from several spot ETF funds in the United States. Okay. The upcoming halving and growth in broader stock markets on the back of rates cut could buoy, buoy, buoy Bitcoin prices to at least uh, 50000 in the short term. On-chain analysis from CryptoQuant, Quant, said in a Wednesday report shared from with Coindesk. All right. I get really nervous, guys. I'll be honest. When I see people that do this stuff, it's all voodoo, smoke and mirrors. It could go up. It could go down. It could go sideways. And it could do, could do nothing, right? And they do this on-chain analysis crap. And I ah, know it's all, come on. It's all bull crap. But I do agree that the ETF thing is huge. The halving, I'm not sure about. I don't know enough about it. But anyway, let's go on. We argue that Bitcoin and crypto markets could have a positive year in 2024, mostly amid the effects from the market valuation cycle. Number two, network activity. Three, the Bitcoin having. Four, the macroeconomic perspective. Ooh, whatever that means. Uh, five, Bitcoin spot ETF approval. Ooh, that's the big one. I think five is the biggest one on there. And three is probably number two. Six is growing stable uh, stablecoin liquidity. Yeah, I don't know. Growing stablecoin liquidity. Uh, okay, USDC and all those. Uh, maybe I have no idea. Again, I think the key takeaways are three and five. On chain, here we go again. On chain valuation and network metrics signal Bitcoin remains. Uh, well inside a bull market and maybe targeting fifty four thousand dollars 
in the median turn and 160,000 as this cycle price uh, price stop. Okay. But I thought they said up here 50,000. 50,000 was right here. Right? Now they're saying 54,000. Okay. Not sure why that's different. Bitcoin has historically rallied after a halving, uh, which automatically decreases the supply of new coins in the open market, and traders are likely pricing in the event that's next scheduled for April 2024. So they're running the price up almost before dividends and stuff on traditional stocks. They'll rump the price, and then when you get your dividend, boom, the stock price goes down. So that's, I don't know. We'll see. Meanwhile, over seven major traditional financial players, such as BlackRock, and Van Eck are all in talks with the U.S. Security and Exchange. Bom, bom, bom. They're all in bed together, guys. Come on, don't fool yourself. It's one big rich boys club, and we ain't in it. Uh, they're all in talks with the SEC for the spot Bitcoin ETFs. We know what's going to happen. Come on, BlockRock owns the world. And uh, the, some of the guys at BlockRock worked at SEC, and then they keep circling back and forth. And, oh, I'm going to work at BlockRock this year. Ten years, I'll go work at SEC. And I'll help my old buddies get what they want. And I'll go back to work at BlockRock. You get it, guys? Come on. It's a game. All right. All right. They're, they're still, uh, what do you call it? They're in talks about this, you know, Bitcoin ETF. That's just lip service. Is likely saying the talks are proceeding positively. Yeah, while well, they're having drinks and, you know, all that other stuff. All right. Prominent Bitcoin holders say the development is likely one of the biggest development in Wall Street in 30 years. Look at that. That's what I'm talking about. And that's number five. That's the Bitcoin spot ETF. Just keep that on your radar. Who knows? It is not unreasonable to suggest that this might be the biggest development on Wall Street in 30 years. Uh, Michael Seller is huge on Bitcoin. This guy is Mr. Bitcoin. He's buying everything. He said in a CNBC interview on Tuesday, suggesting the, uh, last, uh, the last comparable new product was the S&P 500 ETF. This allowed investors one-click exposure to that wildly uh, followed index, right? Sellers business software company, uh, MicroStrategies, is the largest public holder of Bitcoin. Yeah, he's been gobbling and gobbling up the old Bitcoin, Satoshis. He has over 8 billion, that's a B, worth of the uh, asset in its treasury. Wow. Wow, that's amazing. All right, traders are also expected the U.S. Federal Reserve to lower interest rates in 2024 as inflation has continued to decline. Has it? Has it really? Has it really? I don't know. People are really hurting out there. They're spending like crazy and maxing out their credit cards, but I think inflation has not lowered. I think it's that's all smoke and mirrors. So I don't know. I think the market may just crash like it did in 2008 based on consumer debt. And then, of course, countries in debt. What the, what the heck is the uh, the debt ceiling right now or what we're at? A billion dollars? Who knows? However, prices could still slide in the short term as recent investors sit on large, unrealized gains. Yep. Yep, 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 yep. People have not uh, taken profits. They're just sitting on, on paper. They're, they're up, but it could all go down. You just don't know. All right. There are some risks of a price correction given that short-term Bitcoin holders are experiencing high unrealized profit margins. This has historically has uh, preceded price correction. So you people are holding, they got high unrealized profits. You should, I don't know, it's a tough one. I did a video on the psychology of when to take profits and people are just hoping it's gonna go to the moon yet. You hodl, H-O-D-L, hold on for dear life. And then it, it corrects, not crashes, but it corrects a lot. Big swings in crypto, folks. Not just 5 10%. Boom, you can have some 85% corrections, right? And then you're left hole in the bag. It's like, uh, what? I just bought Bitcoin at 44. I was expecting it to go to 100. And now it's down to 25. Yeah, okay. <laughs> Speaking of that, we just crossed 44,000. Look at that. Dun, dun, dun. See that? All right. Let's rock this, uh, finish this off here, man. Bitcoin has rallied over 180%. <laughs> Let's repeat that. 180% uh, on a year-to-date basis, which could create a possible bearish scenario ahead of the new year. The only problem with Bitcoin, you don't get dividends. So it's not like a dividend stock, but you're holding it. So I don't know. Is the game you haven't... you? bought it at say 26 you're at 44 you start taking some profits off the table 
just so you're not left holding the bag if it does correct. I don't know. You guys tell me what strategies are you doing and what do you guys think about? I don't really care much about, the, eh, I guess the having is number two to me. I got to learn more about it because when you do limit supply, usually demand goes up and along with the ETF, the BlackRock spot ETF and all the good old boys working together. It's all one big club, like I said, because you know it's going to get approved. Do you get ready for a nice uh, ride to the top up to 55, 60 or north? You just don't know. Remember, it used to be at 60,000, what, a couple years ago? And then it just kind of corrected down and people just forgot about it for a year. The miners kind of went away because Ethereum was no longer mineable. It went to proof of stake and now everything's back on, man. We got this spot ETF and the having kind of out there, the slurry, the slurry of uh, events uh, on the horizon from, I'm going to say early January, February for the spot ETF approval, just my guess. And then, of course, the having is falling after that. Yeah, I don't know. That may give the ETFs enough time, once approved, to get the word out to their conventional investors. And they're going to say, hey, Billy Bob, you have a BlackRock account with us with a billion dollars. Why don't you put like 5% into this Bitcoin ETF? And then Billy Bob will go, all right, all right, uh, uh, Sal, let's do it. Put put 10% in there, in that ETF and that Bitcoin thingy. And they'll do it. And then you'll start bringing in conventional money, people, old money, conventional money. People, just, like I said, aren't going to go out to freaking Gemini or uh, what the hell is the other Coinbase and buy freaking Bitcoin and put it in a wallet. They don't know that crap. That, that's too much work for them. They just want to, hey, put that, I want that ETF. Boom, I want that, uh, like a Fid Vanguard has ETFs, uh, uh, Fidelity's got ETFs. It, it's just, it just makes life easier, you just buy it, boom, it's in that fund, and then the fund does all the magic for you, and you set and forget, right? Or you keep investing, and maybe you get paid dividends. I don't know yet, we'll, we'll see what comes out of it. All right, that's the latest on this. That's all I wanted to talk about, is I saw this, and I don't know if they're doing a, getting the hype worked up more, or they're just being realistic. But I, I think this article is pretty well grounded and based on these um, these events coming up. So I think, again, the, uh, da, 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 what is it, the number three and number five, the halving and the ETF are things. If you have time, tonight's homework is to go look those up and uh, educate yourself a little more on them. All right, that's all I got. Talk to you guys later. I'm out. Bye.